welcome back to this uh, session on uh, multiple regression. In the previous session, we have seen uh, how path diagram helps us uh, understand uh, the direct and indirect effect of an explanatory variable on the response variable. And as we saw, the path variables are uh, more relevant when the explanatory variables are correlated. Today, we are going to extend that discussion and talk about uh, one more uh, quantification of this collinearity. The relationship between the explanatory variables, uh, that particular situation is referred to as collinearity or multicollinearity, right? And uh, uh, we have seen uh, the effect of uh, collinearity uh, through path diagram. Today, what we are going to do is look at what is called as uh, look at what is called as variance inflation factor (VIF), which is also a quantification of collinearity amongst the explanatory variable. So, first of all, uh, what is what is uh, variance inflation factor? Variance inflation factor is the amount of unique variation in each explanatory variable and it essentially measures the effect of collinearity, right. Uh, so, in particular, this VIF for a particular explanatory variable is calculated as 1 over 1 minus R squared, where this R squared is not the regular R squared of the multiple linear regression but this r squared is the coefficient of determination on a special regression where that particular explanatory variable is the response variable and all the other explanatory variables are the explanatory variables what do i mean by that so let us say that uh, there is a multiple linear, multiple linear regression where the explanatory variables are x1 x2 x3 x4 and we are trying to study the impact of these explanatory variables on the response variable y. Now, what will be v i f of x 1? v i f of x 1 will be 1 over 1 minus r 1 squared. What is this r 1? r 1 or r 1 squared, r 1 squared is the, uh, is the coefficient of determination uh, in a regression, in a regression where x1 is the response variable, x1 is the response variable and x2, x3, x4 are your explanatory variables. Okay. When we calculate uh, vif of x2, we will say it is 1 minus r2 squared. And what is this R2 squared? R2 squared comes from the regression where X2 is the response variable. X2 is the response variable and X1, X3, X4, they are our explanatory variables. Okay. So, now what will happen if, if this R squared is a large value? When will the R squared be a large value? r squared will be a large value if this regression is significant, right? If this regression is significant, which means that explanatory variable x1 is fairly correlated with x2, x3, x4, right? If that happens, then this r squared will be a large value. If this r squared is a large value, vif will be a large value, right? vif will be a large value. So, this is how you quantify variance inflation factor. Now, why is it called variance inflation factor? Now, if you recall, if you recall, uh, we, we discussed about the, we discussed about the partial slope and the marginal slope. Now, when we discussed about the partial slope and the marginal slope, what is the expression for uh, this estimation of the partial slope? So, partial slope, uh, partial slope, uh, uh, we discussed uh, that uh, it is uh, beta naught plus beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 x 2 and so on. So, this beta 1, beta 2 are the partial slopes. Now, from the sample of data on which we are going to run the regression, I am going to get an estimate of beta 1 which we called as b 1. From the, est from the data, I am going to get an estimate of beta 2 which is b 2. Now, this is only an estimate and therefore, it is going to have a standard error of itself, right? Standard error in estimating beta 1 can also be calculated and if you had noticed in the Excel output, this standard error is also getting recorded. 
So similarly, there is going to be a standard error in predicting beta 2, which is called SE of B2, right? A standard error in uh, B2, standard error in B1. Now, uh, what, what was the expression for this standard error? Uh, so uh, first of all, uh, let us let us first of all see where is this getting recorded. So let us go to Excel, right? Let us go to Excel of our uh, uh, GPA example that we had discussed last time right a gpa example of what we had discussed last time where remember we were looking at uh, we were looking at uh, uh, we were looking at uh, cgpa in the mba program as our response variable cgpa in the mba program as our response variable the scores in the entrance examination and scores in the interview were our explanatory variables you recall that uh, uh, regression in the previous session so here here we had said that the estimate of beta 1 is 0.455 and the estimate of beta 2 is 0.622. Now Excel also reported the standard error in this estimation. Standard error reported was 0.168 and 0.213. So this is essentially this value, this value is essentially standard error in estimating B2. This value is essentially standard error in estimating b1 right so uh, how how are these calculated right so this is where it is reported if we had seen the simple linear regression where we are where we had considered only one of the explanatory variables one of the explanatory variables this was our standard error in estimating the beta so this was our se b1 and similarly this would have been our standard error standard error in estimating beta 2 standard error in estimating beta 2 right so uh, this is this is what we are talking about this is what we mean by standard error in estimating the slopes standard error in estimating the slopes how are the standard errors calculated standard error in estimating b1 is generally given by uh, the standard error right standard error which you already know what this is this is an estimate of sigma of epsilon right uh, divided by square root of n multiplied by 1 over standard deviation in x what is standard deviation in x this would be standard deviation in x1 right so uh, let us go to that variance inflation factor okay so uh, generally uh, the standard error in b1 is estimated as standard error of uh, the, the standard error in the uh, error terms uh, divided by the square root of n 1 over standard deviation of that particular explanatory variable. So, if you are estimating standard error in b1, this will be standard uh, uh, deviation of x1, right. If you are if you are calculating the standard deviation in b2, this will be standard deviation of x2 variable. Now, we all know why standard deviation in x2 is in the denominator, right. If the x1 range is quite large, if the x1 range is quite large, which means that the standard deviation of x1 is quite large, that actually helps me understand the variation in y. And therefore, if the standard deviation in x is quite large, the standard error in b corresponding beta value will be smaller, will be smaller. And what, what, is, what do I mean by uh, this standard error value being smaller? I get very high precision in estimating that particular beta value. Right. Once again, take the extreme example. What if all the x values, right, all the x values, all the x values were same, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, and therefore the standard deviation of this will be 0, right. If the standard deviation is 0, what will happen to the standard error of B1? Standard error of B1 will skyrocket, which means that you will get absolutely no precision in estimating that particular beta, okay. So, this is typically what happens in absence of VIF, in absence of VIF, okay. When will, uh, when will VIF be absent? Uh, VIF will be absent if the explanatory variables are uncorrelated, okay. But if there is VIF, if this is, if there is VIF, the standard error in the estimation of B1 gets inflated and how does it get inflated? It gets inflated by this factor, it gets inflated by this factor. Okay. So, with VF, the standard error in estimating B1 is actually much more. Standard error in estimating B1 is actually much more by this much amount, by standard deviation of VIF amount. 
Now, uh, going further, uh, how, how is this VIF? Uh, so, if the explanatory variables are completely uncorrelated, if the explanatory variables are completely uncorrelated, then the coefficient of determination in that special regression would be 0, right, would be 0 and if you plug in 0 here, you will get a VIF of 1. Now, VIF of 1, if you plug it in here, which means that there is no change in our uh, uh, precision. The standard error of B1 remains pretty much the same if VIF is actually 1. When will VIF be 1? VIF will be 1 if the correlation uh, amongst the explanatory variable is just absent, right? Uh, when we ran that special regression where one of the explanatory variable is made response variable, if that regression has a uh, R squared of 0, then the VIF will be 1. However, if the explanatory variables are correlated, correlated somehow and VIF turns out to be a value more than 1, then we can say that there is collinearity in our model. Okay, there is collinearity in our model. And uh, as we saw, larger value of VIF in essentially increases the standard error in predicting the partial slope and therefore, it can make our predictions very, very unreliable. Okay, very, very unreliable. Now, let us look at, uh, let us look at our data, right? Let us look at our data. Let us go back to that GPA example, right? So, this was the, uh, this was uh, the uh, multiple linear regression model. This was the multiple linear regression model. And if you recall from the data, the explanatory variables were correlated. Explanatory variables were correlated. Entrance examination was an explanatory variable. Interview was an explanatory variable. And there was a 54% coefficient of correlation, uh, 0.54 was the coefficient of correlation between the two explanatory variables. How does that get reflected? That gets reflected, that gets reflected by running a regression, by running a regression where you make one of the explanatory variables a response variable, the other explanatory variables remains as an explanatory variable and you see that the R squared is almost 0 0.3, 0 0.29 is the R squared. This is the R squared that is going to get used in calculating the VIF. Let me say that again. What is this special regression? This is a special regression. There was a simple linear regression where we had used one of the explanatory variable against the response variable, right? Here, the response variable was the CGPA in college and one of the explanatory variables was kept in the model. In the second simple linear regression, our response variable did not change. Our response variable was CGPA during the MBA program. The explanatory variable changed. Now, this is a special regression. This is a special regression where we have made one of the explanatory variables, where one of the original response, original explanatory variables as a response variable and the other explanatory variable remains as an explanatory variable. So, the R squared reported was 0.29. And therefore, I can calculate the variance inflation factor. This 0.29 is the R squared. Similarly, the other uh, regression is also going to report the same 0 0.9 or 0 0.29, right? Uh, where uh, uh, doesn't matter whether I have the entrance examination as the explanatory variable or whether I have the interview as an uh, explanatory variable, right? The VIF is still going to be 0 0.29. And therefore, the VIF is going to be 0.29. Uh, 1.41, 1.41, okay. And, and uh, the square root of this, right, square root of this, square root of this is going to be the inflation, is going to be the inflation. So, we can say from this value that there is going to be a 18 percent increase, there is going to be a 18 percent increase in the standard error of the corresponding beta value, okay. So, uh, going back to this expression here, right, corresponding uh, this square root of VIF turned out to be 1.18 and therefore, the standard error in beta 1 is going to increase by about 18 percent. Similarly, the standard error in the estimating beta 2 is going to increase by 18 percent, okay. Now, fortunately for us, in our example that we have taken, for uh, our e example, the inflation uh, uh, because of VIF was not much. It was only 18 percent increase, okay. It was only 18 percent increase. However, uh, uh, however, uh, sometimes the VIF could be very large, 
right uh, for us uh, we were little more fortunate we were little more fortunate that uh, our r was only 0.54 and uh, particularly the r squared uh, the r squared was 0.29 right was only 0.29 now imagine imagine if this r squared was uh, of the range of uh, 0 0.7 for example right 0.7 now if this r squared was 0 0.7 right if this r squared was 0 0.7 let us see what what would have happened okay the variance inflation factor would have been 3.33 okay variance inflation factor would have been 3.33 uh, therefore, uh, the square root of that 1.82 there, there would have been 82 percent increase there would have been an 82 percent increase in the standard error of B1. Okay. What does this do? Well, why do I want to keep the standard error in estimating beta 1 to be small in general because it is standard error. Anywhere I see standard error in regression I want to keep it to the minimum. Now, what will happen if this standard error gets inflated which is why we are referring to this as VIF it is variance inflation factor right what if this standard error in estimating beta 1 gets inflated look at the look at the multiple linear regression model now uh, let me let me delete this so that this becomes clearer okay now if this if this standard error terms get inflated right and uh, for, for us we were fortunate that uh, standard error did not get inflated by 82 percent right it, the, the error inflate the standard error inflation was quite small only 18 percent if this would have been very high what would happen to the t statistic the t statistic would come down right why would t statistic come down t statistic is how is the how is the t statistic calculated the t statistic is calculated like this Okay, uh, how is this t statistic calculated? This t, this t statistic is for a null hypothesis that that particular beta value is 0. Okay, and how is this calculated? This is calculated as the prediction of uh, predicted value of that beta divided by the standard error of that beta. Now, if this standard error gets inflated because of, uh, because of VIF, now, because of VIF, let us say the standard error gets inflated. This T value is going to reduce. Okay, this T value is going to come down. Okay, and what if this value comes down? What if this value comes down? Right, what if this value comes down? It may actually impact my P value. It may actually impact my P value. If this T statistic is very small, if this T statistic is very small, if this t statistic is very small i may not be able to reject this hypothesis i may not be able to reject this null hypothesis okay what if i am not able to reject this null hypothesis if i am not able to reject this null hypothesis i may end up saying that well i don't know this beta could be zero i cannot say for i cannot say with confidence that this beta is not zero i am not able to reject this null hypothesis okay and what if I am not able to reject this null hypothesis? If I am not able to reject this null hypothesis, it means that that particular explanatory variable may be statistically insignificant for the regression. Okay, that particular explanatory variable may turn out to be insignificant for the regression. Okay, that is really the extreme case of collinearity. That is really the extreme case of collinearity. Okay, I, I, I will discuss a uh, uh, another example for this I will discuss another example for this where I will demonstrate an extreme uh, case but coming back to this uh, I do not want this explanatory I do not want this explanatory variable to be insignificant in my regression therefore I do not want this t value to be small therefore I do not want this standard error to be a large value if I do not want this uh, standard error to be a large value I better make sure that the VIF is in control and the only way to make VIF in control is to ensure that the explanatory variables do not have too much correlation, okay, do not have too much correlation. Is that point understood? Okay.